what's up everybody welcome or welcome back to the channel i hope y'all are having a blessed day let's go ahead and get straight into what brought you to this video things to consider for a cam and or head swap on a 5.7 liter hemi before we get into the video i just want to let y'all know if y'all see me eating this turkey sandwich or some checks mix it's because i woke up did not have time to eat had to go run some errands this that the third and now we're doing this so i'm gonna get this video done we're gonna have a chat while I eat and we gonna see how it turns out. So we're gonna go over the things that you should think about before getting yourself into the project. And then we're gonna talk about parts for the camshaft swap and parts for the head swap. Some people will swap a cam without pulling heads. A lot of people do pull the heads at the same time though. And some of y'all might just need to do a head swap by itself. So we are going to have the things for the head swap and the things for the camshaft swap separated. All right, let's get right into it. Y'all, I swear there was a tiny piece of cardboard or some shit on this hole. I just had to pick it off. I don't even understand how that could happen. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get started on what you need to consider. So the first thing that I would definitely consider is the mileage of your vehicle. If you got 60,000 miles on your Hemi, you're most likely going to be straight. It's going to be more simple than somebody who has, per se, 145,000 miles, 150, 160,000 miles. So like I said, for lower mileage motors, it's going to be a pretty simple, straightforward cam swap. But for the higher mileage Hemis, you're going to want to consider things like a water pump, oil pump, serpentine belt, timing chain. All of these things tend to need to be replaced when you start getting into the higher mileage range. But don't fret, this is just an opportunity for you to go ahead and upgrade these things instead of replacing them with OEM. You can go get a high volume oil pump from Melling. You can get a water pump from Melling. From High Horse Performance and quite a few other places, you can get heavy duty timing chains so it's more durable than the stock. Or some people switch it out for a 6-1. And then of course the serpentine belt's just the serpentine belt. Go ahead and replace that. It makes sense when you have access to it very easily. Now let's talk about the next thing you'd want to consider. The actual model year of your motor. You see the 2009 to present 5.7 liter Hemis are different. They're referred to as the Eagle motors. And these motors are VVT. You look at the pre-Eagle motors from 2003 to 2008, those are non-VVT motors. The camshaft, head, oil pump, and a slew of other things are going to be different than the pre-Eagle motors. So for instance, some of these Eagle motors, 2009 and up, they can have certain things bolted on that we cannot bolt on to pre-Eagle motors. So this is definitely going to impact your build, especially due to the fact that certain components for the pre-Eagle motors are starting to fizzle out. A lot of these companies constantly say out of stock. These companies have constant back orders on these products. So the model year of your motor or vehicle is most definitely going to play a key factor in the build process. So moving on, let's talk about something else you need to consider, the direction of your build. When doing a camshaft swap, it's best to know exactly where you're going in the build process. If you choose to grab a naturally aspirated camshaft that is not spec to run boost, you are not going to be happy throwing a supercharger on your car later on with that NA cam in there. However, if you get a supercharger cam and you're naturally aspirated for a while, you'll be fine until you go ahead and throw a supercharger on the vehicle. So in considering the direction of the build, you need to consider your goals. How much horsepower are you looking for in the long run? Are you going for a naturally aspirated build? Would you like to use nitrous? Or would you like to go forced induction and have a supercharger or a turbocharger thrown into the mix? Then you have to consider drivability. Is this going to be a track toy? Or is this going to be a daily driver that you're gonna have to take everywhere? Now moving on, another thing to consider is your budget. So obviously in the budget, you're gonna to have to consider the cost of parts. Other than considering the actual cost of the parts, you're gonna to have to consider who's doing the work. Labor could damn near double the price of what you pay for the camshaft swap, which is insane. From the torque converter being installed to the camshaft being installed, 
The whole time that they have the car and they're working on it, you're getting charged $100, $125 an hour most times. Typically, it's around $800 to $1,000 just for the install of the camshaft because they have to pull the heads and everything else. And then you're going to have to consider the fact that you might need a torque converter and they'll have to install that as well, which is going to add time, of course, adding money onto the cost of labor. Then, of course, it ties back to the mileage of the motor once again. If you're going to have the oil pump, water pump, serpentine belt, and timing chain replaced, that is going to add time as well, adding money to the labor cost. And the last thing to consider is most definitely tuning. This is one of the most important aspects of your build. The tune up in your car can make or break your build. There have been plenty of people who go get a tune by Joe Schmo and they're very unhappy with the performance of their 60 to 130, their 60 foot times, their eighth mile, their quarter mile times, all of it pretty much. And then they'll go to someone reputable such as EFI specialties and they'll go get a tune and they'll be ecstatic because that car will be performing much better with the same exact setup with just a little bit of a different tune up in it because experience is priceless. Somebody like Dave Katz over there on the keyboard, you're going to have a perfect tune up. You got Joe Schmo who got HP tuners on his computer last year. Not only can he give you a crap tune-up that may hinder performance, but he can actually hurt your motor as well. So tuning is a very important thing and it is very much so worth the cost. You also need to consider, would you like an email tune-up or a dyno tune? If you go with a dyno tune, most of the time it's trying to get peak numbers, but drivability, it's not really gonna be there. You get an email tune-up, you're data logging on the road, you're data logging at the track. So you're going to be able to get the drivability down as well as have that peak performance. So those are all the things that I would personally consider in the budget. All right, now let's jump into the nitty gritty of it. Now you have to actually consider the camshaft. You have to consider how intense you want this camshaft to be. This can also affect your budget. If you go with a stage three cam, you're going to need a torque converter, better springs, push rods, all of that. If you go with something that's not intense and it's just a straightforward swap and you don't even need non-MDS lifters and you're keeping MDS, that's going to be a completely different price tag. So you definitely have to consider how intense you'd like to go with your camshaft. This is most definitely going to affect some things with your heads. Some camshafts, not so great for daily driving whatsoever. Some of these camshafts are very, very streetable. You can go with a camshaft that requires aftermarket springs, or you can go with a camshaft that's fine with the stock springs in your head right now. The hotter the cam, the higher likelihood that you're going to need springs. And when you're considering a camshaft and everything that's needed with the camshaft, you're going to need to consider push rods, retainers, springs, spring seats, and valve seals. Another giant thing to consider is if you want MDS or not. Some people do not want to let MDS go. They want to retain MDS and they want to get the most mileage out of each drop of gas that they can. And some people absolutely hate the MDS system. Either way, do your research, consider what you would like and decide whether you want to retain MDS or you want to delete it. All of these things need to be considered, especially if you're grabbing a camshaft by itself rather than a full kit to do the swap. And then lastly, as I've mentioned previously in the video, you may need to grab an aftermarket torque converter. It depends on the size of your cam. And many of the things that we just talked about will affect the heads. If you go with a cam that's only netting you around 25 horsepower and you just want a little bit of chop, you're most likely going to be fine running with everything stock in the heads. You go with something stage three that sounds like you're trying to chop down a tree you're most likely gonna have to evaluate the situation within your heads. Now that we've spoken about all of these things that you need to consider, let's get into the actual parts list and things that you will need from the parts to the tools. So new oil and a couple of filters will be needed if you are doing it at home. On first startup, you're going to have to go through the break-in process. Antifreeze and distilled water will be needed, or you can go ahead and get a premix from Mopar or like Xerix or whatever you want to call it. If you have a 300 with the headlight squirters, you're going to need some windshield washer fluid just to top it off. Of course, motor assembly lube. This is very essential. And if you're not pulling the heads to do the camshaft swap, you're going to need 16 magnets to hold the lifters back. A new crankshaft bolt and camshaft bolt would be wise. There have been a lot of arguments within the forums on whether you need new camshaft and crankshaft bolts or not. Some are torqued to yield, some are not. So 
I would highly recommend going ahead and grabbing a new camshaft and crankshaft bolt. Either way, they're like 15, 20 bucks each, and that's not much money for a peace of mind. So those are the things that are necessary for the camshaft swap. This one is for everybody. You might wanna consider changing your spark plugs. It would be very easy to pop 16 out, examine them and pop 16 in. You may also wanna consider grabbing some underdog builds apparel. In all seriousness, I do have underdog builds apparel. You can find it right over here at this website where it will be in the description as well. All of the current designs have been designed by me. So fast shipping times, very comfortable and high quality clothing. And all proceeds will be used for the 300, the sand rail, and getting myself into a shop or garage space so we can actually get content going. And also, of course, a chunk of the proceeds will be going to tires and things of that nature so I can make the content that you all enjoy. If you would like to support the channel, if you would like to support the content and rock a sweet piece of merchandise, go ahead and click the link right here. Now let's go ahead and jump into all the parts that you will need if you're pulling the heads as well. So you'll need 20 long head bolts or studs, You'll need 10 short head bolts or studs. I definitely recommend ARP. And you will need exhaust manifold slash header bolts, whatever you want to refer to them as. The ARP header bolt kit is like $45. It's not too expensive whatsoever. You'll need head gaskets, of course, as well as exhaust manifold gaskets. These can be reused. It all depends. However, it is always recommended to stick to OEM. A lot of people when installing headers, they will stick to OEM because a lot of these aftermarket gaskets will end up causing leaks down the line. And intake manifold gaskets. You can reuse them, but a lot of times they end up tearing. So you might as well at least have a set handy. And if you don't need them, now you have them for when you will need them down the line. Now let's talk about the actual tools that you will need to do the work. A full set of metric sockets will be needed. You will be mostly using 10 to 15 millimeter though. Screwdrivers for clips, clamps, etc. You know they can be a pain. Go ahead and keep you a screwdriver right next to you. Little flathead to pop things off. Of course, one of the most important aspects, a torque wrench so you can torque things to the proper spec. You don't want to go, mm, that's good enough because mm, it's not. A coolant drain pan and an oil drain pan will be needed as well as an oil filter wrench. 3 8 and quarter inch ratchets will be needed with various extensions. Some of the extension lengths that you will need will vary, so I would just go ahead and grab out every extension that you can possibly find. Obviously don't have them rolling around everywhere, but have them where you can get to them pretty easily. A 5 8 swivel spark plug socket is also going to be needed. Now these next two things can be rented or borrowed from an auto parts store. Obviously it will be free, but you will have to give them a deposit so you don't just run off with the tool. And one of those tools is a harmonic balancer puller as well as a valve spring compressor. Obviously, if you're changing the valve springs, you're going to need this. The last two things aren't necessarily tools, but they will most definitely be needed. You will need plenty of shop rags, plenty of them. And I mean a good amount of shop rags. Make sure to keep them handy. And a nice set of mechanics gloves, or you might want a couple of sets in case your pops, your uncle, your homie, your brother, whoever else is going to be helping you. So this is pretty much the rundown of everything that you will need to consider if you're doing a cam and or head swap. Whether you already have a cam and now you want to do a head swap or whether you need to replace a head gasket or whether you're just doing a camshaft swap, this video should pretty much have you covered. If I forgot anything, if I didn't mention anything, or you feel like something needs to be further explained and you have the knowledge, go ahead and drop it in the comment section below. I would love to learn, and if I forgot something, I would love to pin your comment so everybody can have the most accurate information possible. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. I'll catch up with y'all in the next one.